Watch Mr. Wizard. Now, Mr. Wizard's not his real name, but that's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Oh, uh, Willie, one of the kids in the neighborhood is coming in the door right now. So let's join him and watch Mr. Wizard. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Hi, Willie. What's your... Hey, how some days are here? Well, don't you recognize a nucleus when you see it? What's a nucleus? Well, I guess you don't, huh? Well, you'll find out about that. And you'll also find out about this. What's it? Well, this is a chain reaction. Chain reaction? Uh-huh. In order to show you how a chain reaction works, you take this match, okay. light it, and touch it right there. All right. That was a chain reaction. Oh, everything followed in succession. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know what I'm talking about when I say nucleus and chain reaction and so forth? Yeah, I'm afraid not. Well, today, Willie, we're going to investigate atomic energy. Mm -hmm. Now, atomic energy has a, a lot of words in it that you probably haven't heard about before. And we're going to talk about things that really scientists can't even see. It's like going to an entirely different country where people speak a different language. So you're going to have to pay very close attention and learn some new words today. So you pay very close attention, right? Here are some of those words right here. Let's see All atom. atomic energy. Mm -hmm. see. Atom. Atom. Electron. Nu nucleus. Nucleus. Proton. proton um, neutron. Neutron. Radioactive. U-235. Atomic pile. Atomic bomb. And Geiger counter. Now, have you ever heard of any of those words before? Well, some of them. Which one? Well, let's see. Um, atom. Atom. Mm -hmm. Electron. Mm -hmm and radioactive, mm -hmm. and atom bomb, mm -hmm. and atomic pile, and Geiger counter. Now, do you know what those words mean? Well, no. Well, I think you're kind of in the same spot that lots of people uh, are, in that they've heard these words and they read about them, but they really don't quite know what they mean. And before you leave today, you'll know what every one of these words mean. At least I think you'll have some idea. Now, let's find out where this atomic energy comes from, this, this thing right up here. And to do so, we're going to look at a glass of water. Mm -hmm. Here's a glass of water right here, see? Right. Now, if we divided this glass of water up into lots of little drops, we'd have a drop like this, wouldn't we? Right. See that little drop there? I'll see if I can roll it over, out of there, out of the lycopodium, so you can see it a little better. Whoop, there she went. Here you got another one. Here, you see that drop right there? Right. Now, if we divided that drop up into little tiny pieces, as small as we could possibly get them, till we had the smallest piece of water we could get, we'd have a water molecule. Oh, sure, we talked about we molecules. We talked about molecules. Now, to give you some idea of, of the size of a molecule, in that little drop of water right there, there are 200 million, million, million molecules. Oh, it's an awful lot for just that drop of water. Can you see how small they must be? Mm -hmm. Now, let's take a look at that molecule. Right. Remember the formula for water, the H2O. chemical formula, is H2O. That means when the scientists draw it, they might draw it to look something like this. These are atoms, and all three of them together are the water molecule. This big atom right here is the oxygen, and these two small ones here are the hydrogen. Now let's actually look inside the atom. You mean even deeper? Way deeper inside. And scientists have studied the atom and they found out that here's what it's made up of. Inside is a thing called a nucleus, meaning the center. Oh. That's one of those words, see? This is way inside the atom. And in the nucleus of oxygen, they found that there were electrical charges, eight in all. And notice I made them plus. They're positive charges. These are counterbalanced on the outside by electrons or tiny little particles of negative electricity that go spinning around the nucleus, kind of like uh, the planets spin around the sun. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are negative charges of electricity, the electron. Now, they found that most of the weight of the, uh, of the, of the atom is in this nucleus, this mm -hmm. part in the center. And they found by weighing uh, the oxygen atom that it should weigh eight because there were eight particles in here. 
but they found that it weighed 16 instead. So they discovered that there were partic extra particles in the nucleus that didn't have any charge at all, that made the weight greater than just the eight protons, which were the plus charges. And they called these particles that weren't charged but had weight neutrons, for neutral. Oh. See? So now we have neutrons, the, the particle is, has no charge on it, protons inside the nucleus, which are the plus charges, and then electrons which go around the outside. Now that's what the atom looks like. So now we can go over and cross off some of these words. Yeah. Yep. Atom is a little tiny piece of an element, right. piece of matter. Inside the element, uh, inside the atom, is a ring of electrons, negative charges of electricity, and in the center, a nucleus. So that's what a nucleus is. That's center a nucleus. And then inside the nucleus are plus or positive charges called protons, mm -hmm. and uh, particles that don't have any charge at all called a neutron. Mm -hmm. Now. Let's take a look at what happens in ordinary energy. Okay. In ordinary energy, it's the electrons that do all the work. In fact, here in this battery, we have a chemical reaction that has gone on to make uh, sort of an extra supply of neutron or uh, of electrons near one of the poles. Electrons. Yep. That's why you call it electricity. Sure. From electron. In fact, the study of the flow of electrons is called electronics. So we're going to take electrons from the, these batteries, run them out through a wire over here through a transformer to give them more push. We're going to run them down through this wire over here to a spark gap. And you know when we've used this before, we oh, get a sure. spark. Well, that spark is elect our electron jumping across. Yep, yes, now we're going to create heat. I've got gunpowder inside that hole. Gunpowder is made up of chemicals that have atoms in them, and they have electrons around them too. When we heat them up enough with that spark, the electrons are going to jump and change and grab hold and, well, it's not quite that, but at least they're going to change and form new compounds that have different structures within the molecule. They're going to arrange the electrons in different ways. We're going to get gases that expand, and that's what makes the explosion. Okay, try it. Okay. You throw the switch. Keep it out. Begin to heat up. There she goes. Whew. All now, by electrons. All with electrons. Now, in fact, the, the most powerful bonds before the atomic bomb all worked on this principle of putting together some kind of materials whose electrons changed places and created a gas that expanded. But now the atomic bomb is much more powerful than that, isn't it? There's a lot more electrons in it. In fact, it isn't concerned so much with electrons as something in the nucleus of the atom. In Let's the center go, of it? In the very center. Let's go look at this nucleus again. You know what we're talking about? Hold that a minute. I want to get my pencil. Have you ever heard of nuclear physics? Nuclear physics, um... Physicists well. who worry about the nucleus of an atom. Oh, like That's doctors what we're talking who about. study atoms. Mm -hmm. So, what has happened in here, as far as the atomic bomb is concerned, is the scientists noticed that these plus charges were all next to one another in the nucleus. Now, you know, ordinarily, plus charges repel each other. You yeah, know, like, like north, got and north, north and north and south and south in a magnet. What is it that holds all these particles together? Well, scientists don't really know too much about it, but they have given it a name and call it binding force that holds these things together. Now, if you could take a bullet of some kind, you could go in here and smash this nucleus up. Boom. Boom is right. Not only that, but these little particles in here would zoom out. The proton would zoom out like this. The neutron would go zooming out like this. And even the electrons would go zooming out. And while this is matter in its present state, in other words, actual things that have weight, these things would change to energy. Gee. But that, that's a very difficult thing to realize, that you can actually have matter and change it to energy, but it really happens. In fact, Einstein computed how much energy would be given off when a pound of matter was destroyed. Mm -hmm. And here, just so you'll get some idea of what we're talking about, here is a pound, okay, a pound of butter. If we could get at the energy that's in the nucleus of the, the atom, if at the center of the atoms of this in this pound of butter, we and then could change that to electric current mm -hmm. and could sell that current at a rate that you're paying for electricity today. You know how much money you, you'd have? What? Just by selling the energy in that pound of butter? About $110 million. $110? In fact, from Ooh. this little pound of butter, if we could get out the energy in the nucleus, we could run all the railroad trains in the United States for a couple of years. Whoa. Brother. Now, you oh. see why scientists are so excited about the idea of getting at that energy within the nucleus of the atom? The center of it? Mm -hmm. oh. In the center of it. In fact, they, they are hoping that they'll be able to run uh, submarines and Maybe steamships the power and, and everything, just by getting at the power that's in the nucleus of the atom. 
In fact, there are some elements that are naturally breaking down like that. What are they? Well, the nucleus are automatically breaking down. Well, let's go over here. I'll show you. Okay. See this right here? Mm -hmm. What is that? Oh, it's a sparkler. It's a sparkler. All right. Well, now when we're talking about it, it isn't a sparkler at all. What is it? Well, this is a substance that we're pretending is naturally radioactive. In other words, it naturally gives off these particles, the nucleus of its atoms are automatically breaking down. You might say like that. You see all the energy that's going off in the yeah. form of, uh, of various types of rays? Mm -hmm. That's uh, the, uh, probably, the, I'm using this to represent probably the most common radioactive element that you might know. What's that? Radium. Oh, sure, you see that on watches sometimes. That's right, on watches. And the reason why they use it on watches is it's, it's naturally giving out this energy and uh, it changes to light and you can see it in the dark. Mm -hmm. So, this is a natural radioactive substance called radium. radium. And its nuclei in the, in the center of the atom are breaking down. Okay, now we can cross off a couple of more words. Okay. Now you know what radioactive means? Sure. Radioactive means that the, the nucleus is breaking down and giving off energy. And um, we still have this now. U-235. U-235. Let's take a look at that. Okay. You know, in chemistry, the C stands for carbon. Yeah. Well, in chemistry, U stands for uranium. Oh, you mean the, the or like? The or, or uranium, that's that, right. That people are now, ordinarily, uranium is not radioactive. It isn't? Some of it is, some of it isn't. But the part that's radioactive is very, very small. In fact, uh, the part that's not radioactive is called uranium-238. That's the weight of the atom of uranium. But the part that is radioactive is called U-235. It doesn't weigh quite as much. See, oh, it's only 235. That's the valuable part? That's the valuable part. So scientists have been trying to figure out how to take uh, and get uranium-235, which is radioactive, and get it in some kind of condition here where they could bombard it with some kind of a particle, like a bullet. So let's pretend that this group of balloons right here okay. is the nucleus the of, a, of the center of a uranium atom, uranium-235. This is a natural radioactive substance. It's giving out protons and neutrons and so forth. But now let's get it close to another U-235, that's giving out a neutron. Uh -huh. Here, you take the scissors and take this balloon, and you cut the balloon off back there, and pretend to kind of point it out here, so you've got a neutron, and you're gonna bombard this uranium-235 nucleus, okay? okay? And I'll cut a string down here, so we'll break this nucleus up. Are you ready? Right. Okay, Ooh. let's pretend the nu neutron comes zooming along, cutter, wham, and it breaks this u nucleus of U-235. Now what do we got? Some big ones here? Well, what we've actually done is to break this big complicated nucleus up into smaller nuclei. nuclei. But the important thing is we have, two small ones we have two neutrons left over. So what can you do with those, Mr. Well, Williams? if we started out with one neutron and broke a, 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 a nucleus up and got two left over, we could take these two and, bomb and break two more. Oh. Here, let's do that. Okay. Take this one up here. You pretend that you have another neutron there. Now get ready to break up this nucleus. Ready? You ready? Yep. Bam. Woo. See, we break that, and what do we get? Two more. Two more. Okay, we have we had two over there, didn't we? Where's the other one? Here, take this one. Okay. Let's break this one up. Bam. Woo. And we have two more. Now we started Wait. out with one. Yeah. We broke up a nucleus, we got two. two. We took the now I'll turn it off. Wow, Isn't that, that something? Was really Ooh, oh, what terrific like energy coming out of the nucleus of the atom. They kept bombarding each other. Okay, now you can check up a couple more on our list, can't you? Okay, let's see. There was the atomic pile. Yeah. And you, two, three, five. That's right. And the and atomic, the atomic bomb. bomb. There you are. No, we still have one left. Geiger cone. Have you ever played with a Geiger cone? Oh, no, I'm afraid not, Mr. Well, I've got one right over here. Come on, Ooh, let's take a look. Oh. One over there at the edge of the, t of the uh, desk. Okay. Here's what a Geiger counter looks like, at least one version hey. of it. And here's the way a Geiger counter works. This tube-like arrangement has a tube inside of it. Uh -huh. And it's filled with a special kind of gas. When one of these particles that comes shooting out of the nucleus of, of an atom, a radioactive particle, goes through this tube, it means that the current that's going around here down through the tube can flow better. So every time a particle goes through here, there's a little surge of current goes through. And that little surge of current goes down here in the wire and down through into here. 
Yeah. And it's actually magnified, made louder. And then you can put earphones in here and listen. Oh. But we both want to hear. So I've got the, where the earphones ought to be, I have this plug. This plug, you see, goes back here in the wire, yeah. all the way over here to an amplifier and to a speaker. So every time you hear a click-like or a sound on the speaker, it means a radioactive particle went through this tube. Mm -hmm. Now, the more radioactive particles go through the tube, the, the more radioactive the object is that you're near. And as you approach it, it'll get more clicks and more clicks and more clicks. Oh, so, uh, that's how in, in, the, in that uh, film that you saw over there, the, the afterwards the men went around on the boats and actually checked to see how radioactive all the ships were and the water and everything else, and even the clouds, with a machine something like this one. Really now, how would you like to go on a treasure hunt? Okay, Mr. Wizard, where? Right here in this room. Oh, you mean using the Geiger counter? Using the Geiger counter. In fact, um, someplace in this room is a deposit of radioactive material. Where? Well, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to find it. And when you find it, you'll not only be, uh, well, let's say, an atomic scientist after a fashion, but you'll also find out how to have a lot more fun out of life. Okay. Okay, you all set? Sure am. Now, let's check you out on this now. You take this tube and you hold that in one hand like this, mm -hmm. nice and carefully. And then I'll turn it on. You see this switch right here? Yeah. Well, I'll turn that on like this. Hey, what was that clicking? Well, that's something is going through this tube. Now, you remember you've heard about cosmic rays? Yeah, well, some, way up north from that Well, right? sometimes they're way up north, but they're actually around here too. They come from outer space and they come zooming through the atmosphere, and some of them actually come uh, going through this room and you and me, and some of them are going through that tube. So if you hear an occasional click, it's that kind of radiation. Well, but I'll really be able to hear it. You'll be really be able to hear it when you hear okay. it. In fact, I'll give you a clue. It's over on this side of the room, someplace over here. Okay. Okay. Take this in one hand. Okay. Uh-uh. Geiger count over here. You know, it really started to click? Wow. Okay, open it up. Hey, there's the message, Mr. Wilson. Okay, read what it says. It says, whether you want to be an atomic scientist or a good athlete or just be more popular and have more fun out of life, it pays to follow the rules of good health every day. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that means getting plenty of sleep, exercise, fresh air, water, and rest, plus three well-balanced meals a day. And that's the message, Mr. Wood. Well, now, you see, uh, you did a good job of uh, making a discovery, plus you also found something very important, uh, is, is that was the key to how to stay healthy and strong. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know how to start out on the road to good health? Every day? Oh, I sure do, Mr. Wizard. With a breakfast of fruit, cereal, milk, bread, and butter. Right, that's the best way. In fact, nutritionists tell us that from the breakfast you eat, you should get from one-fourth to one-third of your whole day's food needs. And the best way to get them is from a breakfast of fruit, cereal, milk, bread, and butter, or other foods for variety like eggs or breakfast meat. Then, two doctors found in a series of tests from college boys and girls at a big Midwest medical school that when you've had a cereal breakfast, you're able to work better, you're keener and sharper, and your muscles won't get so tired, especially during the late morning hours. So you see, it's smart to start out every day with a good breakfast. Hey, what's this piece of metal down Well, that little old piece of metal was the radioactive thing. Oh, you mean the stuff that made it really click? That's the click thing that made it click. In fact, this piece of metal actually was in the atomic pile. It's a piece what? of cobalt, especially. Real one? Yes, and right now, it's giving out invisible rays that went through that Geiger counter. Oh. That's why it made so much noise when you got near it. Now let's check our list. Okay. There's a pencil. Now we can check off Geiger counter. Right. So you see now we know something about atomic energy anyway in that it takes place within the atom, mm -hmm. and that the atom is made up of negative charges of electricity zooming around kind of an outer circle, and within that, in the very center, is the nucleus. That's where nuclear physics comes from. That within the nucleus are positive charges called protons, and charges, or, uh, particles without any charge at all called a, a neutron. These are the things that do the bombarding in mm -hmm. case of uranium. And that when these particles fly out, this is radioactivity. And that uranium-235 means that the weight of the nucleus weighs this much. And this is radioactive and the thing they used uh, to help, at least in the very beginning, on the atomic bomb. And an atomic pile is a big pile of graphite or other material sometimes in which they can sort of control the chain reaction, remember? And finally, you saw the pictures of the atomic bomb and know that its power came from the nucleus of the atom. And finally, the Geiger counter is one of the methods of keeping control of it. Well, you know, Mr. Wizard, I learned a little bit about atomic energy and that, and I also learned 
some proton, proton is that it? Proton, proton and neutron, neutron and so forth. Neutron. But there's one thing you haven't done yet, Wait. and that's found another piece of radioactive material. Oh, well, where is it? Well, I'll find it. Oh, you with the Geiger counter. With the Geiger counter. Mm -hmm. Well, turn it on. He's starting to cook pretty fast. Hey, it must be around here. Oh, the radium in your watch. Sure, hold it right over my watch. Hey, there's a little message in there, Mr. Wizard. See that little piece of paper? That's right, it has a message on it. And why don't you take a look at it? Okay. Let's see. It says, time, oh, time to go. Oh, Mr. Wizard. Well, what are we going to do next week? Well, next week, Willie, uh, I think you may be surprised at some of the things we're going to do because I'm going to show you that next week, some of the houses in this neighborhood and all over the United States are actually made of salt. What? Did you realize that? In fact, we're going to have a lot of fun doing some amazing things with acids and bases like this. Don't forget to be with us next week for another exciting program of mystery and magic in everyday things when the Serial Institute again invites you to watch Mr. Wizard. Oh yes, and uh, by the way, Mr. Wizard lives in Chicago.